Since the sixth season of The Dragon Prince came out, I've been wondering a lot about something specific that happened. Something that happened with Leola. Now, her death was a shocking scene, and it's been on my mind ever since. What I'm really wondering about is how this event played out. In this video, I'll be sharing my thoughts on that, and I'd love to hear your perspectives too. So, here's the question. I'll get it out of the way up front, and the rest of the video is just going to be me kind of going over some of my reasoning and thoughts on it. My question is, is Leola actually dead? So, feel free to share your insights below. So, if you're curious about why I might have doubts about this, since they literally said that Erebus could die with her, then stick around. I'll be discussing my suspicions and reasoning and raising some questions from the show and from a meta narrative kind of perspective. So the immortality of the star touched elves is a fairly recent innovation to the story. Back before season five, we really didn't know that star touched elves were immortal. I mean, we did. Well, I mean, we knew they lived a really long time, but we didn't know that they were indestructible. It was in the episode where they went to the library that we learned about the Nova Blade. And it's the only thing, apparently, that can kill a star-touched elf. What's interesting about this to me is that it was seemingly understood by Rayla that star-touched elves can't be killed in a traditional way. But that was never established before this moment. So I suppose it's the kind of thing that perhaps the people in the world of the Dragon Prince would understand, but something that nobody's ever said aloud, so that we the audience would understand that. Up till that scene, I had no reason to think that just stabbing Erevos wouldn't kill him. Like, we knew he lived a long time, but I didn't realize he was indestructible. So before we get into the details with Leola, it's important that we understand how the information about the Star Touched Elves has changed throughout the series. This is going to help us analyze what happened in Season 6 and what I think might happen next. Before Season 5, we really didn't know much about the Star Touched Elves at all. We knew they lived for a very long time, and we learned that the Nova Blade was said to be the only weapon that could kill them. Now, this was important because it suggested that Star Touched Elves were immortal and couldn't be killed by just stabbing them. But the Nova Blade, for some reason, a magical blade, I guess, could stab and kill them. Season 6 gave us more information that both added to and complicated what we already knew about Star Touched Elves' immortality. We learned from Cosmo that even the Nova Blade wouldn't really kill a star-touched elf. If their body was destroyed, their spirit would reform when the stars aligned again, allowing them to return to Zadia in a new vessel or a new body. Later in that same season, we saw the Cosmic Order of Star-Touched Elves judge Leola, and it seemed like their decision would result in her death, or permanent destruction, whichever would be more applicable to a being like a star to stealth. This quick change in what we know within one season has led to a lot of speculation and debate in my own head, especially about what star to stealth's immortality really means and what powers the cosmic order has. The main question that comes from these events is whether Leola is truly dead, like the end of her existence in how we understand it, or if this is just some kind of complicated imprisonment. So during the judgment scene, we clearly see Leola's body destroyed and thrown down to Zadia. The merciful one convinces the other two judges to allow Erevos to die, that's the word they used, with Leola. And Erevos' reaction in this scene seems to suggest that he believes that this is in fact a final irreversible end for his daughter. However, however, this apparent death contradicts what we had just learned this same season about Star Touched Elf immortality. If Star Touched Elves can reform their body after it's destroyed, then why wouldn't this apply to Leola? Does the Cosmic Order have the power to not only destroy the body, but also the spirit that allows for reformation? If true death is possible for Star Touched Elves, what makes it different from the destruction of a body that allows for eventual reformation. Given these contradictions, we can think about several possibilities regarding Leola's fate. The Cosmic Order might have the power to destroy both the body and spirit of a star-touched elves resulting in true, permanent death as we understand it. 
Alternatively, Lila's body might have been destroyed, but her spirit could somehow be trapped, preventing her from reforming when the stars align. Another possibility is that the characters don't fully understand what happened to Leola, leaving room for her to return or continue existing in some form. The involvement of the Cosmic Order in Leola's judgment raises more questions about what they are and what exactly they're capable of doing. What exactly is the Cosmic Order and how does it relate to the individual star-touched elves? Are they the Cosmic Order or do they merely represent the Cosmic Order and the Cosmic Order is some kind of order that is, um, I, the Cosmic. <laughs> Why hasn't the Cosmic Order done anything about Erevos, given how much he's interfered with mortal affairs? Could Erevos have found a way to defeat or avoid the Cosmic Order these many thousands of years? These questions lead to some interesting ideas about the balance of power among star-touched elves and the potential future plot developments. Erebos seems to be immune to cosmic judgment in a way, and has had a huge influence on mortal affairs. This raises the possibility that he might be the last of the truly powerful star-touched elves, perhaps the last of the Great One. This could explain why he's been able to do what he wants for so long, why no other star-touched elves have tried to stop him directly. If this is true, it could have important implications about the future of the series. Erevos might be operating without any real limits on his power, except for the mortal races of Zadia. The fate of Zadia, and possibly the entire world, could depend on Erevos' actions and his motivations. The final conflict of the series might involve not just defeating Erevos, but also restoring some kind of cosmic balance. So backing up to Cosmos saying that they can't be killed, and then a few episodes later, discovering that the Cosmic Order seemingly does in fact have the power to kill would not be too out of line with the series. One of the Dragon Prince's greatest strengths is his use of unreliable narrators and incomplete information. The changing information about Star Touched Elves could be an example of this technique in action, with each new piece of information making viewers rethink what they think they know about the world. My favorite example to illustrate this point has always been in season two, Lujane says humans can't do magic. And then by the end of that same season, we see Callum cast primal magic without a primal stone, something that we had been told was impossible. Lujane, a character in the world, believed that, but she was just wrong. This approach keeps the audience interested and allows for surprising revelations that don't feel like the writers are changing the rules per se, as long as it's done carefully. So up till now, I've kind of been talking about what's happened within the show, but now I kind of want to back out of the show a little bit and kind of talk about the show from like an outside viewer watching a television show perspective. So it's worth thinking about how death is usually handled in TV shows for younger audiences. Usually the death of a younger character is rarely ever shown, if ever shown. And when it does, it is almost always vague and ambiguous, and almost certainly off screen. A famous example of this is, of course, Jet's fate from Avatar The Last Airbender, where his death is strongly implied, but never explicitly confirmed on screen. This ambiguity allows for a gentler approach to difficult themes while still addressing them. Given this context, the apparent on-screen utter destruction of Leola is unusual, to say the least, for a show like The Dragon Prince. This difference from the usual approach could be either a very bold storytelling choice, or perhaps a hint that there's more to Leola's fate than what we see. I would be very surprised if they did something like this, if they showed her being destroyed as they have, and we do not see her in some kind of spiritual form or spectral form or some kind of indication that she wasn't fully destroyed in the way that it seems to be implied from the scene. So now I want to talk about what might happen next. So based on the information and analysis presented, we can speculate on potential future developments in the series. Despite appearances, Leola might not be permanently gone. Her spirit could play a role in future episodes, perhaps as a motivation for Erevos' actions or even redemption. The events surrounding Leola's judgment could be part of a larger plan by Erevos. His apparent acceptance of her fate might be hiding his true intentions to somehow rescue or bring her back. 
Future episodes might explore more of how the Cosmic Order works, potentially revealing limitations or loopholes in their power that could be used by Erevos. The series might continue to change how it presents Star Touch Cell's immortality, perhaps introducing new concepts or clarifying existing ones to resolve some of the current conflicts of information that we have. In the final season, it might center around Erevos' ultimate plan potentially involving a change to cosmic law or perhaps an attempt to rescue Leola with far-reaching consequences for the entire world of Zadia. I'm sure that his plan will likely involve some pretty nefarious means to justify the ends, but perhaps it will be Leola in some way that will bring him back from the brink. In conclusion, Leola's fate remains really unclear in my own mind, and I'm really curious to hear what you guys think. So whether it's through flashbacks or her spiritual presence or some kind of miraculous return, Leola's influence on the narrative could continue to shape the final season. As fans, we're left to ponder the possibilities and eagerly awaiting the next chapter in this rich and mysterious tale. Thanks for watching.